Hi, my name is Doug Peterson. I teach Capture One Master's program at Digital Transitions, and I'm going to give you a couple tips about Capture One. The first tip involves the viewer and the browser. We can turn these on and off so we can maximize the amount of real estate on the screen we're using for whatever we want to view. The default view is that the browser's at the bottom, the viewer's in the top, and that both of them are on. We can turn the browser on and off using the command shortcut Command B, as in browser. But since Command V is normally used for paste, we can't use Command V to turn the viewer on and off. Instead, we use Command Option V, which turns the viewer on and off. Note that if the browser is off, when you hide the viewer, just the browser shows up, and when you show the viewer again, just the viewer shows up. If you want to move the browser from the bottom to the side, that's Command Shift B. Capture One has a variety of tools for the experienced photographer or digital tech doing tethered shooting requiring advanced naming. My favorite is clipboard contents. In the camera tab, go to next capture naming and click on the dot dot dot. Instead of name and camera counter, we're going to switch this to be clipboard contents and camera counter. That means what's ever on my clipboard is going to be put into the file name as I shoot. Here, I'll use a preset list of serial numbers of products I'm shooting. As I copy them to the clipboard, the name of the next capture automatically updates. This is great for those who know what they'll be shooting and have very specific file name requirements. Another great option in Capture One is to ignore the crop upon processing the image out to a TIFF or a JPEG. Many times, digital techs or photographers find themselves in need of producing both cropped and uncropped versions of a file. And rather than having to reset them in the actual file between processing, you can simply select this as an output method. To do this, go to the Processing tab, create a new recipe, and make sure that Disable Crop is selected. Here we have 8-bit TIFF cropped. Under Adjustments, Ignore Crop is not checked, meaning that whatever crop is applied will be included. And here we have Uncropped. We'll check the Ignore Crop box there, and as these files process out, they'll process out without cropping. In this example, I have a variety of headshots which have been done with a one-to-one -one crop. There's a variety of situations in which I may want to produce both cropped and uncropped versions of these files. I'll select all, check both process recipes, cropped and uncropped, and push process. Each individual file will be processed out both ways. I can use the subname and subfolder tokens to make sure they go to separate places to make file management of those two separate types of files a lot easier. One of my favorite parts of Capture One is just how customizable it is. You can add keyboard shortcuts for almost anything in the program. In Capture One Master's program, we teach you how to add shortcuts to styles, workspaces, and commands like exposure, contrast, and high dynamic range. Let's take a look at the exposure option. We go to Capture One, Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. We duplicate the default set, which you can't change, and we look underneath Shortcuts, Exposure, Increase Exposure. Note that the default shortcut is Apple Option Shift Equal Sign on most laptops. That's not very desirable. Let's change that to dot and comma. Now if I have one or more images selected and I want to change the exposure, I can do so directly from the keyboard. There are a variety of tools built into Capture One to help you preview and share images as you're shooting with people who are not on location. As an example of this in Capture One Master's program, we teach you how to use Capture Pilot across a great distance to allow someone else a real-time access to your shoot, allowing them to edit and provide feedback. Another great way of doing this is using the iMessage system. Let me show you how you can send a file directly from within Capture One to a client using iMessage, including read receipts and the ability to type in information and receive feedback immediately. Go to the Process Recipe tab, start a new process recipe. A good one to use would be QuickProof because it processes very quickly, but you can send any small sized file. I'm going to rename it JPEG QuickProof dash send via iMessage. Under Basic, I'm going to say Open With, and instead of opening with one of the existing programs there, I'm going to say Open With Other, and under Applications, I'm going to select the Mac Messages program. Using this process recipe, I can process files directly from Capture One into messages where I can send them off to a client, an art director, or someone else. 
Here, I'll select a couple images. I'll process them. I'll switch to messages where they're already being processed to. I'll grab both of them, drag them onto the JC icon for James Conkle, our intern, and I'll send them off. His cell phone happens to be sitting right here. So just as soon as they're sent off, I'll see them, and when he taps on them, it'll actually register as red. Red at 419. If he says, hey, amazing, and I'm okay speaking on his behalf, I'll see his message and I can reply directly back in within the same program. This is a great quick way of getting files over. For more advanced ways, capture pilot remotely, contact sheets, FTP syncing, and other methods can be used during a tethered shoot. We'd love to see you in one of our Capture One Masters programs where we teach all of these techniques and hundreds more in an in-depth eight-hour series of classes. They're broken up into advanced workflow, which teaches you how to move through the program very quickly, and advanced image adjustments which teaches you how to use Capture One in the same way you might use Photoshop.